How many of you wanted to go on a vacation last year? Possibly an island, somewhere oceanic with palm trees. As long as you have a plan, then I'm sure you can make it to that said holiday destination. Just like our dreams, whether we want to go hiking, learn a new language, or learn a new skill like painting, it's so paramount that we plan, plan, plan. The success of your creative career depends on the size of your dream. Now, we all have different dreams. Some people dream to be at home with their families, not to travel anywhere. They just are in love with their environment, and that's fine. But some other people, they want to explore the world. They want to travel to uncharted territories, and that's also perfectly fine. What dreams do you have? What kind of dreams have you always been holding on to, but you've been putting them on hold? Hi, my name is Jules and welcome to the Business Canvas, where I will be giving each and every one of you guys a few business tools and skills. Today's topic is about how success in a creative career, and in any career in fact, is so important. It relies on one of three things, the size of your dream. If you guys haven't seen that video, please go ahead and watch it before this one. So let's get started. What is dream? What is the definition of a dream? What are dreams? So the definition of a dream is a personal and aspirational vision, goal, that fuels motivation and guides actions towards a desired future outcome. I know we all have dreams, and like I said, some are small, some are big, and some that are small are big to people, and some that are big are small to people. So dreams are relative. That's why it's so important that although they are aspirational, you might be seeing your favorite celebrity going to the Bahamas, and now you're like, I gotta go to the Bahamas. It's got to be personal as well. Because when it's personal, it just really hits different to put it into those terms. So it's fueled by what? Fueled by motivation. Motivation that makes you do what? Motivation that guides you to take action. <laughs> it, take, it, it, it literally pushes you to take actions towards your desired outcomes. And there is the word desired once again. What is desire? Desire is when you want something or you wish for something to happen, right? Or along with that, desire means to long for an everlasting life despite our five senses. And what are those five senses? Our sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. And of course, external environments outside of that. So actions towards a desired future outcome in our previous discussion we also mentioned that desire is not only knowing what the definition is but it's also knowing how to differentiate between your weak desires and your strong desires we also touched on the impacts of negative desire and we also touched on how you can actually define your strong desires how to sustain them and how to build them so, like I said, if you didn't see that video, it's important that you view that one before this one so you can understand where we're going. However, if you haven't seen it, you can watch this video and then you can skip right over to that one. All right, so let's get started. I want you to picture that you were on the game Survivor. So, you know the game show Survivor? And this is you right here. Hi. <laughs> yes, guys, this is you right here. And you were just placed in the middle of the wilderness. Not so nice, not so ideal. But the point of this game, right, is so that you can reach a desired destination. And the span of time is literally according to you. So this game is a little bit different to the one on the TV show or whatever. Okay. So you've, put, you've been placed in the wilderness and it doesn't matter how long you will take, right, because... You, you're still yet to find out where, are, where is your destination and what are the tools that are going to help you to get to your destination. So they drop you off and they give you a bag and they say, so inside your bag, you're going to have a few things. You're going to have a compass right over here. 
you're gonna have a map and you will also have a knife so a little pocket knife and you'll have a lighter so those are the few things that they've left you with in the wilderness and it's up to you to survive and to thrive to get to your said destination so the destination is what we'll represent with the d and the little icon that shows you that this is where you are right now this is where you want to be x marks the spot and that's our destination up here okay so now you've got your map you know where your destination is more or less and now you're given with the task to find your way through the wilderness your knife can help ward off any predators and enemies your light your I want to say fire right so a light or a matchbox whatever you choose to make it your fire will help you keep warm during your travels it will help cook your food it will also help you with light right so that if you don't make it there during the day which is sometimes not possible or not possible at all in this case because you're in the wilderness right but it should be able to help you with some light so that you can see in the nighttime or in the noon in the afternoon and then you've got your map of course which shows you your destination we'll call it dream this is the island that you need to go to and apparently at this island there's a beautiful tasty virgin or non-virgin mojito cocktail and it's the best tasting one and you just want to go there and taste it for yourself you want to know how the resort actually is you want to sit under the palm trees have the oceanic vibes and <laughs> just everything about this place is dreamy so that's why we call it destination d <laughs> okay and not that d all right okay and then the most important thing you don't have an iphone i'm sorry this is not that time you're thrown into the wilderness with a compass now a compass has coordinations like north east south and west then of course northeast southeast southwest northwest and these coordinations are to help you along with your map to get to destination dream so what if you don't know how to use the compass what if you don't know how to read the map and the coordinations on the map what if you don't know yet how to use the knife how are you going to use that lighter matchbox that fire well Unfortunately, this is for you to figure out. You're thrown into the wilderness anyway. So I liken this to our day-to-day -day lives where we are thrown with a set amount of tools along with our five senses, right? Sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. So we are essentially limited by our surroundings. We're limited with what we have. But you're not really limited. Why do I say that? because at the end of the day if your desire is strong then you would make sure that you know how to use your resources to get from point a to d <laughs> to destination desire destination dream which is destination desire well triple d All right and it's it's just so crazy because let's say you were really in the wilderness were you going to complain right were you going to spend the whole month week or day many hours complaining about what you have what you don't have or would you just get to it because the longer you complain the longer you stay the same the longer it takes for you to get to destination dream and the longer predators will come and the longer the longer the longer the longer right so along your way right picture yourself walking now you figured out how to use the map eventually you know how to read it and you feel like you are walking in the direction of your destination now along the way you find obviously because you're not in the same place you find uncharted territory what is that that's places you've never seen areas that make you question if you're going in the right direction or not and sometimes along the way in these uncharted territories you'll find a beautiful waterfall with some water to finally drink and instead of plowing forward i'd recommend that you relax press your brakes a little bit <laughs> in your car and take a drink of water jump in the water take a bathe rest because you really do need it 
and keep walking you know as you keep walking maybe you bump into uh, uh not bump into but you get to a village a nearby village and maybe the nearby village is somewhere around here and you're asking them for directions and you're asking them like please help me i've been walking for so long you're communicating with them they welcome you into the village they feed you they can see you tired they give you a bed to sleep on and they give you a set of directions and then in the morning to your surprise one of the villagers says to you you know what i've actually tried to get to destination dream but i got so lost and confused that i ended up finding my way back to the village so why don't we go together because i feel like the route that i took was the wrong one and now that you've got resources like your map and um, the compass and you have your own weapons then if we put the two of our weapons or, or supplies together we and our brains together most importantly we can make it to destination b together so picture this as your life you might be or you might feel like you're thrown into the wilderness with limited supplies along with your five senses however you're longing for this destination as you're walking making your way at first maybe you don't know how to use your resources that you have but you figure it out because you're the type of person that does what they can with what they have and as you're walking you get to a waterfall so that you can drink some water maybe in your career you've stopped in uncharted territories that were actually good for you you know you needed to stop there before you got to your destination because you're learning how to rest you're learning that drinking water which is necessary is so important and as you're walking along you get to the village you know you might bump into a group of people in a real life setting where along your journey you find mentors and people that have tried to get to where you wanted to get possibly and now they're, they're, they're on your side, you know, they see your vision and they're like, let's go together. And before you know it, little you has made it to destination dream, destination desire, not all on your own sometimes, but possibly with incredible people that you met along the way. Similarly, in our dreams and goals and supposed destinations we feel like we're all alone but that's not the case and i'll show you just how so how did you get there you know you got there with your compass the resources that you had before we uh, we carry on and the beauty about what you did there is there was a level of planning right you didn't just start walking you took your time to look at the map to understand it to understand how to use the resources around you so that you can start making your way in this journey so similarly this is exactly what you'll need to do to reach small dreams and big dreams and this is how okay so i've written down all these tools i call them tools why do i call them tools because these will help you never these will help you navigate to get to your dreams. You'll be able to keep track with these steps slash tools. You'll be able to see and identify where you went wrong and what you can actually do to get to where you need to get to. So the first thing that you'll need to do when it comes to, you know, the destination itself is defining your vision clearly so how does your destination look like how do your desires your strong desires look like so begin by articulating your creative vision with precision clearly define what success looks like for you whether it's reaching a certain audience collaborating with specific brands or achieving a particular income level having a clear vision sets the foundation for you so define your vision clearly Number two, set your goals and set measurable goals. Remember, in our previous discussion, we talked about the SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Check that previous video 
guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to know how to define your strong desires. But setting these measurable goals is key. And I've also explained why you can't skip any of those five aspects of the SMART goals. Right. So I also want to give you an example. By the end of the year, I aim to complete 20 commissioned art projects, increasing my income by 30% compared to the previous year. So already, you know, time bound is year end. You aim to complete 20 commissioned art projects. Very specific, right? To increase my income by 30% measurable compared to the previous year. Also relevant because you don't want to find yourself repeating the same cycle and not actually improving from last year. So that's an example of what it looks like to set a measurable goal. The third one is metrics matter. Numbers don't lie. And what I love about social media platforms and these apps nowadays, especially not even nowadays, it's been like this, but your metrics are there. You can literally look at how many times people click on your videos, how often they are on there, how long they watch your videos if it's on YouTube. And also how big your audience has grown over time. An example for that is I will track my Instagram engagement rate, aiming for a 20% increase over the next quarter through interactive content and audience collaboration. Very clear, very clear, very defined, very number orientated. You're going to track your Instagram engagements rate, right? So rate is a number aiming for a 20% increase still within the metrics. Over the next quarter, quarter of the year, still the same numbers, numbers, numbers uh, through interactive content and audience collaboration. So through interactive content might be content like this or however you perceive it. And then as well as audience collaboration, there's so many different ways that you can actually go into this. And if you do need help with that, just comment down below and then we can talk about different ideas together. The fourth one is financial evaluation. Mm. Oh, the pockets, right? How are you going to get to destination dream without considering the fact that your financials are so key? I've also got an example for that. So establishing a monthly budget for art supplies and marketing, right? With a target of generating $5,000 in revenue per month by the end of the financial year. So establishing a monthly budget for art supplies. How many of us as artists or creatives go into stores like our favorite stores, right? Let's say you're a photographer and you're going into a camera store and you plan on buying a specific lens or a cable to charge your battery. But now you're looking at the lens and then before that you're looking at a backdrop or this and this. So setting a specific budget for art supplies is key. Why? Because you need a, you need to have a budget for your marketing as well. So sometimes we found out we find ourselves in a loop where we spend too much on supplies and we don't spend enough on marketing. Whereas if you spend a lot more on marketing, right? And it depends on your career. But if you spend quite a bit on marketing, more than the supplies, you can actually generate income to get the supplies that you want. And that marketing can pay for itself as well. So please have that in mind. Uh, always have a budget i know for myself i am woo, i am so weak like my knees get weak sometimes when i go to arts art supply stores because there's just so many things that i wish i had that i wanted to have that i want to have now and sometimes instant gratification is the doom of doomsday all right so um point number five is time management and efficiency so it really doesn't help if you have all these things above that and you don't manage your time efficiently. Time is a valuable resource for creatives and just anyone on this planet, okay? Quantify your time investment in various projects and assess their return on investment. This enables you to focus on what truly matters, optimizing your workflow for both creativity and productivity. So what does it mean to quantify your time investment in various projects and assess their return on investment for instance if you want to sell an online course instead of creating a course where you have to ship out supplies to each of your clients or class your your, your class why don't you have them use supplies that they can manage to buy within a small budget 
right and then all they have to pay for is access to you and your knowledge and your skills that way you are literally getting return on investment why you're not wasting anybody's time you won't get anybody emailing you i didn't get it i didn't get my package jewels i didn't get my art pack i can't start the lesson right you want to be able to have assess your various projects and their return on investment and not just for yourself okay this is also return on investment for the people that are investing in you so put yourself in the position of your consumers your customers your class and picture what would be the easiest way for them to have access to what you are offering your products everything so keep that in mind guys and girls and ladies and gentlemen i hope you guys are still good <laughs> clap hands cool the next one is um point six audience growth Ooh, it does go hand in hand with the metrics matters and you know audience growth is very important because you want to be able to reach people that don't know who you are so an example for audience growth is increasing my instagram followers from five thousand to ten thousand within six months by implementing a content calendar and engaging with the artistic community or whatever community your career is in so how do you increase your instagram following from 5000 to 10000 within 6 months it's very doable guys when i was still doing fitness i was able to grow my instagram following from 3000 followers to over 55000 followers and let me tell you something it is dwindling but i'll tell you why the reason that it grew so fast within three months is because i was consistent i did things that most people weren't doing i woke up early in the morning i'd start posting stories I'd, and everything related to fitness i'd always post my content at the same time and i'd always try and outdo the content however one thing i've realized in the fitness industry is that as women we i'm just going to be honest here but we over sexualize ourselves right and i know it's our bodies our choices but that was one of the reasons that i stopped because i was just getting feedback that i didn't want and i was creating courses fitness courses or fitness training programs to be specific for women and i was mostly getting contacts from men and it was just very very inappropriate and i wish i could take it back but literally that's what happened why because i posted pictures wearing shorts and all these things tight tights and i'm just being honest right now because you can be good at something right very very good at posting posing exercising waking up on time creating content that you think is going to reach a certain audience however just because you're good at that doesn't mean it's your strong desire so i realized that it's actually a weak desire because i don't have a desire to garner that attention so audience growth is not just about the numbers but it's also about who who is your audience who is your audience which audience group is growing more if it's men then look at your content and reevaluate yourself ladies but if it's women as well Look at your content and reevaluate yourselves, gentlemen. So those are some of the reasons I did not want to continue with fitness in that manner. However, I'll still could I'll still continue doing fitness. And I'm just stating it out there to be very clear, to be very transparent, that it's not just about the numbers. Okay, that's what I realized. It's about who. Who is it? Who is your target audience? So within your desire, have that kind of clarity. Who are you trying to sell this to? Define your audience down to the t down to the gender okay the next thing is point seven and it's continuous learning oh yeah by the way the reason my audience is going down now is because i'm not posting anything <laughs> simply put i'm not posting anything i'm still working on and like i said in my previous discussion with you guys about strong desires i'm working on creating um process yes i'm working on the processes of what i'm actually working on and in that video i mentioned why rushing your processes is not oh it's not recommended okay i almost did something i regretted and i'm just going to be transparent now as well again i almost we almost so myself and my boyfriend who i'm working along with who i'm working with we almost sold our course 
for free. We almost gave away our course that we were selling for free. And don't get me started on whether or not that course was, you know, <laughs> we needed to really work on processes. So yeah, that's audience growth. Um, the next one is seven continuous learning metrics. This is very important. Otherwise, you're just not going to be able to keep track of anything and you won't be able to proceed forward. What is continuous learning metrics? I've got an example. So completing two advanced digital art courses and attending three industry conferences within the year to expand my skill set and stay current with trends. It doesn't help just staying where you are, where you were in the wilderness, okay? We want to move to destination D, destination dream. And along the way, we saw a fountain of water. We saw a village right along our path in the analogy. Similarly, if we want to reach different audiences, if we want to learn new trends, you know, which route did people take before? And no, don't take that route because, hey, you know, you sometimes you can only find that out when you go to physical events. So look for those events in your creative career or any career and attend them set aside a budget as well that's why you shouldn't spend too much on supplies and also you know have a budget for your marketing so that you can go to these events and then you can expand your knowledge like stated here and you can stay current with the current trends or you can set the trends by seeing what the current trends are all right and of course when it comes to educating yourself with courses you can go on YouTube and look for different trainings because people offer free trainings on YouTube or you can still set aside a budget and purchase a course online. There's one uh, place that sells courses for a very affordable price called Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. Whoa, trust me, all the courses you can imagine for a very affordable price. So it is pocket friendly. The last point is point eight and it's feedback improvement okay feedback improvement is just as important as continuous learning because why are you why are you continuing to learn if you're not also worried about the feedback right so you need feedback and you also need to improve along with that feedback so an example here is collecting client feedback after each project and using it to make iterative improvements aiming for a 95 percent this is just an example of guys okay uh, a 95 percent client satisfaction rate by the end of the year so you collecting client feedback is important ask your clients are you happy with the products are you happy with the services and have that as well as part of your marketing strategy to use client feedback you know proof social proof that's what they call it social proof so collecting client feedback after each project so each project each training and using it to make iterative iterative improvements so literally you'll take the the um feedback that you got make the necessary changes and release something that's fresh that's that shows that you're actually listening to people like for instance i went to food lovers the other day food lovers market and they sell meat packages now with those meat packages they come in different sizes according to prices. And I used to have to, like, my boyfriend and I used to have to label each of the packs, like lamb, uh, beef, you know, especially the meats, the, the red meats that look alike. Now, okay, they've got stickers, label and branded stickers over there. So when I went there the other day, I saw that they had lamb stickers. They even had a picture of a little lamb. I was like, congratulations it's like you guys knew what i wanted so clearly food lovers market listened to their customers and they were like why don't you guys just label them because i'm here already why do i have to get home and relabel them when you guys package them for me so it's very smart that and i've noticed the price went up by like 30 rand so they've included the cost of branding and labeling these packages in their price so think about that think about the customer feedback that you're going to get and how it can improve your products and your services. And with all these steps, these eight steps, I'm sure you'll find your what you I'm sure you'll find your way to your destination, right? Your desired outcome. And it doesn't matter where you started. It doesn't matter how many limited resources you had because the reality is there's people that had far less than you 
or literally nothing but themselves okay so you are in a very fortunate position to get started to use your compass to navigate yourself to the uncharted territories and remember when you get to uncharted territories take a step back drink the water relax and look at yourself look at your surroundings look how far you've come celebrate the milestones as well because before you know it you'll meet a group of villagers that share the same dream as you to finally make it to destination dream or to show you exactly how wonderful it can be thank you so much for joining this session on how to even quantify the size of your dream it's so so important for the success of your creative career and just literally any career that you go into my name is jules and thank you once again for joining the business canvas i will see you in the next one remember to subscribe like a share <laughs> and comment please i'd really appreciate it